Ew, what's that? A grub. The Food and Drug Administration allows for a certain number of insect parts to be present in the foods we buy. So let's find out more with 10 foods that are being produced with bugs. Lisa eats bugs. Spices, not just spices. Spice. He knows about the spice. Salt and pepper are staples in our diets. Most of us season our recipes with both of them. But you should know that about 475 bug parts could end up in about 50 grams of ground pepper. That does seem like a lot of insect legs and heads peppering up your plate. Ground cinnamon is allowed to contain up to 400 insect fragments for every 50 grams. Typical cinnamon jars hold about 42 grams. So when you really think about it, any cookies that are made with this cookie-friendly spice or other baked goods that contain cinnamon therefore might not be considered vegan, even if the other ingredients in the recipe deem them so. There's no fly in my soup. Sorry. Ground marjoram can contain up to 1,175 fragments per 10 grams. Typical marjoram containers hold about 18 grams. Crushed oregano can contain about 300 insect fragments for each 10 grams, but ground oregano can have way more, about 1,250 insect fragments for every 10 grams. You will never think of your spice collection in the same way. When you look at your jars, you'll be wondering just exactly what you're staring at. Figs. I don't want these figs. According to the FDA, food defects are just a part of the normal process of growing and processing food. Apparently, they don't present any health hazards as long as the amounts stay below the action levels listed. The FDA allows one defect in fig paste. Insect heads are within all fig pastes. The FDA handbook says that up to 13 insect heads are allowed to be in every 100 grams of fig paste. They may enter the product at any point in time before the figs are harvested, after the figs are harvested, and during the processing of the figs. Figs are considered a fruit, but they're also technically an inverted flower. Figs bloom inside their pods, which are connected to the fig plant. Flowers need to be pollinated in order to reproduce, but because a fig's flower is hidden inside itself, the pollinator has to crawl inside the fig in order to bring the pollen directly to the flower. I pick up some pollen over here, sprinkle it over here. It's inside the fig flower where female wasps lay their eggs. This is a symbiotic relationship. The relationship between the special fig wasps and the figs is mutually beneficial. They each need the other in order to reproduce. However, if the wasp burrows into a female fig, she cannot lay her eggs. She will die of starvation. Instead, when she brings pollen into the internal flowers of the fig, she pollinates it. And then the fig quickly ripens for everyone to enjoy. Specifically, there's about one dead wasp per fig. You won't ingest a live wasp. Its insect skeleton will have disintegrated before we even have the chance to chomp on the figs. Figs produce ficin, which is an enzyme that breaks down the insect's body. It turns it into protein, which gets absorbed by the plant. When you feel crunching while eating figs, it's not the dead wasp you're crunching down upon. It's the fig seeds. Mushrooms and spinach. A nice, safe world full of mushrooms. Think about how many dishes you eat, which contain both mushrooms and spinach. Your favorite salads, your favorite quiches, both are full of these vegetables. Well, there are some added ingredients in these dishes you might not have known about. If you want to avoid eating mites, those tiny arachnids which are related to ticks, then avoiding mushrooms would be a great idea. Kicking mushrooms around. Mushrooms are known to have the highest amount of mites, with approximately 75 mites allowed for every 100 grams of canned or dried mushrooms. You'll find mites in canned or frozen spinach as well. Spinach is allowed to have up to 50 mites or thrips or aphids per every 100 grams, but only if it doesn't have two or more spinach worm larvae, which exceed three millimeters in length. The bugs must share the space. We can see why some of these FDA rules turn people completely off of their favorite foods. Some people plainly have no clue that these bugs and bug parts accompany their meals. Tomatoes, maraschinos, fruit juices. You look like a tomato with a mustache. Uh. Imagine all of the recipes you eat, which are full of tomato sauces. 
Family favorites like spaghetti and meat sauce, pizza, ravioli, and the list goes on. We imagine grandmothers ladling their homemade tomato sauces over so many different pasta dishes. We savor the family recipes handed down from one generation to the next. We picture family dinners where Italian dishes are comfort foods for our bodies and our souls. Well, did you know that maggots are allowed to be in a whole bunch of tomato products? Canned tomatoes can have up to one maggot per 500 grams, and tomato juice and tomato paste can have up to one maggot per 100 grams each. A nominal amount of insect parts may even be detected in ketchup. Tomato plants are grown in soil, and insects feed off of them, so the insect fragments just may be on the plants when the plants are processed. Ketchup is made from vinegar and sugar, garlic and onions, and tomatoes. Traces of insects may, of course, be found in the spices added to the ketchup during flavoring. An allowable mold count is also permitted in ketchup products. My name's Ketchup, and my name is Mustard. Together, we Ketchup and Mustard. A sample of maraschino cherries is considered all right, according to the FDA, as long as no more than 5% of the cherries are rejected because of the maggots they contain. Citrus fruit juice in cans can contain up to one maggot per every cup, but the juice that does have a maggot cannot have five or more fly eggs as well. Everything from mites to snails love to indulge in fruit juice too. Mushrooms can have up to 20 maggots of any size for every 100 grams or up to five maggots if they're longer than two millimeters. Maggots are considered an aesthetic defect. Not sure that we could see them, but this is how they're categorized. Coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Right. As in, I really need coffee, coffee, coffee. Taro is an insect control company. They study how many bugs and insect fragments the FDA allows to be found in packaged foods, and then they calculate approximately just how much that would amount to per person over a year. One of the most shocking totals they've come up with is the amount of insect fragments that are in your cup of coffee. According to their estimates, after just one year of drinking coffee, you can actually have ingested up to 136,008 80 insect fragments. Don't give up your brew just yet. There is a way around this. As reported by a well-known entomologist, it is the pre-ground coffee that contains ground-up cockroaches. He came up with this knowledge through one of his experiences and shared it to inform others of his newfound knowledge. The entomologist had been traveling with a professor who had always insisted on only drinking coffee made from beans ground in coffee shops. This was at a time when there were no Starbucks shops on every corner, and coffee shops were quite far apart. But the professor insisted, even if it meant they were driving for an hour or more every morning out of their way just to get to those coffee shops. The professor was allergic to cockroaches, and what he had discovered was that every time he drank coffee made from pre-ground coffee beans, he suffered from an allergic reaction. Oh! Oh! As he had discovered, large piles of beans get infested with cockroaches in the field where they're harvested, and it is almost impossible to remove them completely. Therefore, when the beans are ground, so too are the leftover cockroaches. But parts of cockroaches in ground coffee are allowed by the Food and Drug Administration (FDA) as long as they don't make up more than a certain percentage. The way around this, if you're a caffeine junkie and the thought of ground cockroaches in your coffee makes you kind of queasy, is to do as the professor did and only seek cups of coffee in coffee stores where you see them grounding the beans from scratch. Better yet, you can buy yourself a small coffee grinder, purchase your own beans, and then proceed seed to grind them yourself. That way, you can have way more control of just what is going to go into your filter, and then what exactly is going to be going into your cup. Peanut butter. Someone has been in my peanut butter. There's a small chance that the peanut butter you're spreading on your toast has cockroach bits in it. The FDA allows an average of approximately 30 or more insect fragments for every 100 grams to be left in. This allowance carries over to all nut butters. I think there might be some kind of 
conspiracy. It seems as though it's impossible for them to keep out all of the insects, which might find their way into the nuts before the nuts get ground. Again, if this idea turns your stomach, but the idea of going without nut butter makes you want to cry, you can invest in a nut grinding machine of your very own so you can examine your nuts before tossing them into your grinder. This is something that can actually be useful to you, especially if you're a vegan, as nut butters are a mainstay of your diet. And the bugs that accompany the ones in the jars render your nut butter non-vegan. Chocolate and candy. Chocolate. <laughs> The FDA allows for 74 insect pieces in an average 4.4 ounce chocolate bar. Taro estimates that chocoholics might be consuming approximately 6,000 insect fragments via chocolate every year. The average chocolate bar in the United States has approximately 8 insect pieces within it. Cacao beans are harvested in the tropical countries of South America where there are low sanitation levels and several general troubles related to their water quality. The cacao tree beans are cut and then they're piled in the farmer's fields where they ferment for approximately six days, similar to the coffee beans we've discussed. During that time, both adults and children step onto the piles. And insects and rodents, small animals, and other living things build their nests within the piles. So it's very possible that there are insect materials finding their way into your favorite chocolate bars. The same thing that happens with coffee beans can happen with chocolate beans. People who are allergic to chocolate may truly be allergic to cockroaches instead. Melody, what? Stop eating it then! Oh, because I'm allergic to it? As for candy, the crunchy candy coating is usually made from secretions from the female lac bug. Sometimes it is called confectioner's glaze, sometimes it's called shellac. Shellac has many uses. The candy coating makes sweets look shiny, and it's also used as a brush-on colorant. As for red candies, such as Skittles or Swedish Fish, they are coated with red food colorant made from the crushed abdomens of African female beetle-like insects. The official name of the colorant is Dactylopius coccus. Vegans and vegetarians need to be enlightened. Pasta. Give me pizza, give me pasta, give me lots of cannoli. Yes, the FDA allows approximately 225 insect fragments for every 225 grams of pasta. If there's more, the pasta product will be banned from the grocery store shelves. That's about one bug part for every gram. The insects find their way into the pasta through the wheat, which itself can have about 75 insect parts for every 50 grams. Rams. Raisins. Hey, hey, remember Ghostbusters? Ooh, I did it. In a simple cup of raisins, there could be up to 35 fruit fly eggs and 10 whole insects, according to the FDA guidelines. They won't harm you when you consume them. The FDA allows for a small amount of insect material that is guaranteed safe for humans to consume, to transfer into our food. It's suspected that it would just plainly cost way too much to try to eliminate all defects from food production. Another reason to hate broccoli. It's broccoli. Aphids are tiny bugs that usually grow to approximately 2 to 5 millimeters in size. They also happen to make up about 10% of the world's consumed insects. What aphids are well known for doing is infesting gardens and crop fields that grow vegetables like broccoli. The FDA allows about 60 aphids for every 100 grams of frozen broccoli, just in case you needed another excuse not to eat the broccoli on your plate. We've got a bunch of other videos for you to check out, so go ahead, take your pick and tap or click.